We're so glad that you're here today. I know it's Sunday morning. We had such an awesome direction from the Holy Spirit on Wednesday night. So I want most of you to be able to attend if you can. We've got to break through some revelation to move into the spirit realm to really begin to bombard heaven and decree and declare and confess faith confessions concerning the things about businesses and concerning the things about wealth and the blessing of the Lord that's in your life. Were you almost there and things are not breaking through, whether it be a mortgage, whether it be a business, whether it be licensing, whether you're waiting on the right people to be lined up, everything's in place and it's not in place. God said to pray and to move in to confession of faith like never before. We started on Friday night. You may be able to get that one. We'll make it available. But every Friday night at 6.30 p.m., we try to be done by 7. We're really going to bombard heaven. We're really going to get a scripture that you can identify because everything you do when the Word of God says that you fight with the Word of God and that it is as sharp as a two-edged sword and that it's powerful and that it's the sword of the Holy Spirit, that's the Word of God. So to have an effective fight in heavens where everything is bound and loosed and settled at, you're going to have to be able to confess the words for the fight that matters. When you go to the doctor, you ask him. He says, what's wrong with you? He said, I don't know, doc, find out. He said, well, let me know when you figure it out, and then I can help. You say, it's my foot. He said, okay, we're going to send you to a foot specialist. You have to be identifying what you're trying to get done. So those of you that are trying to move some things that are not moving, with all the wealth and the money that's moving right now, you know you have a covenant. You already know you're saved. You know God loves you and you love him. Let's go ahead and make some things break loose now. Some of you waiting to buy homes. Some of you waiting to move into apartment buildings. I don't know. Whatever it is, if you're serious, be on there at 6.30 every Friday night on the prayer line. And we'll give you the possibility to go back later and hear it throughout the week also if you like. But other than that, let's listen in. Get the word. And try to listen in to the prayer line. I think you push pound after you push in the code and you'll be able to hear what took place on Friday night. God bless you. We're looking forward to what God is doing right now. I'm feeling something in the spirit. This Friday we were dealing with the blessing of the Lord. Uh, the first time he said he blessed us. Whoo, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Expect great things from God as we bombard heaven and we release that that he has already settled in heaven. God bless you. We'll see you next week on Wednesday, and also on Friday. God bless. Bye-bye. We're going to go ahead today. I just want to look at a couple of scriptures so that you know we're on point. Let's go to uh, Matthew 11. Matthew 11. And this is a uh, scripture. We're going to start in the, uh, let, in the 12th verse. This is a place where Jesus was talking about John the Baptist, but he also mentioned the word violence. So I want to look at this. In the 12th verse, 11 chapter says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force, and the violent take it by force. It's very, very important that you understand the kingdom of heaven is where God does business. The kingdom of heaven is where God does business. The kingdom of God is how God does business. So he said that since John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if we will receive it, this is Elias, which is Elijah, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whether unto shall I liken this generation, it is like unto the children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath the devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. So what is wisdom when it says wisdom is justified of her children? We know that Jesus, it says Jesus Christ, is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Therefore, once Christ has come into you, it ain't about prophecy. It's about taking the kingdom of heaven. Where God does business, whatever he bound in heaven, we can bind on earth. Whatever he's loosed in heaven, we can loose on earth. And now the atmosphere is set. It's time for the children of God to possess the kingdom. 
like never before. And those of you, you know you've been doing right. You've been working. You've been doing this. You've been saving. The devil's been stealing. He's been doing things to you. So it is time to get busy for the kingdom. Let's go in uh, 1 Corinthians real quick. I'm going to just read one verse. One verse, 1 Corinthians, 4th chapter. One verse, it says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. But in power. It's based on talk, but on power. The power of God is activated in the people of God. So when he says in, in Matthew, he said, The children of this world are like unto them. They done heard the word. They done heard the promises. They done heard the covenant. But they won't dance and they won't lament. If it's morning, they don't know when to cry. When it's dancing time, they won't dance. Well, I'm telling you, it is time to go forth in the power of the anointing. Take that that God has released into your life. You've got to go take it because the devil is a lie. And he is a hinderer. He is a destroyer. He is a thief. I'm telling you right now, he'll bring forth stuff against you like you never believed. But let's go into our word today. There's a couple places I want to look at. I want to go to uh, a scripture that is uh, a faith scripture and about the faith walk. It's unlike any other scripture in the Bible. Go to the second chapter of the book of Habakkuk. The second chapter of the book of Habakkuk. When you have it, say amen. He says, I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. In other words, I want to see what God's about to say to me. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be looking. He said, watch and pray. I'm watching. I'm on the pit. I'm looking to see what he will say to me. Am I doing it wrong? Is that why I'm not walking into it? Am I doing it right? What's happening, God? I'm going to stay and wait and watch. See what you're going to say. Did I sow too much? Did I give away too much? Did I didn't save enough? Am I not praying enough if I'm not doing that? He said, I'm going to see if God's going to reprove me or have a problem with me. And then it says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain up on tables that he may run that readeth it. In other words, you got the vision. When you come on Friday nights from now on, keep your pencil and paper with you. When you get a unction in your spirit, write it. Make it plain. People that write songs, they write them for a month before they come out. People that write books, they write them for years before they come out. Learn how to write stuff down because it is the time to bring it forth out of its spiritual existence into its physical manifestation. And you have the power to do it with faith right now. Right now, not tomorrow, right now. God said now. Woo! Glory to God. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things expected. Mm. The word hope for means expect. Now faith. You're in a place of now faith. You're not in a place of yesterday faith. Hey, oh, back then the old time was had faith. Oh, I remember we come this far by faith. No, 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 no. Now, faith, there's warfare going on. The devil's busy, and nobody got no time to play with him. You got to understand how to use the word now. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's strong and powerful. My God. Mm, a consuming fire. All right, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost already. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and shall not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because I... It will surely, it will not, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, what does he mean by that, though it tarry? Hmm. Let me read that scripture in the Amplified for you. Let's read verse number three in Amber. For the vision is yet for an appointed future time. That means that when he gives you a vision, the vision means that it's got to be away from you. So it's for yet a future appointed time. You've been feeling this thing for a while. You've been working on it. You've been waiting to see it, but you've been patiently waiting. Oh, I should wait. Oh, I should wait. But right now, God is saying, seize the opportunity. And then he says, it hurries toward the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. It will not fail. It will not fail. The only thing that can stop it or to make it fail is if you do not seize and take the kingdom of heaven by force. What does that mean? I've got to begin to release the word of God that his angels are waiting to hear on a regular basis. It can't be sometime. Right now, it's got to be serious every day. 
Every day I need a confession of faith of what his promises are. I need a confession of faith of how the spirits are subject unto me. I need a confession of faith of my footsteps being ordered. I need a confession of faith how I have favor with God, how I have favor with man. This is unlike any other time in history. This is the moment for the church of the living God to seize the opportunity of the wealth of the sinner being transferred to the just. And the just shall live by faith. You're going to have to live by faith in this hour. My God, you're going to have to know that it ain't no time to play. And then he says in the fourth verse, For his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. I'm going to read that in the Amplified. Look at the proud one. His soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith in the true God. But the righteous. You see people proud like never before. It's our country. It's this. It's that. This is my neighborhood. This is this. God said, don't even worry about that. You're going to live by the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. The Bible said you were justified by the blood of Jesus, and you have been declared the righteousness of God in Christ. He said the righteous, the righteous, but the righteous will live by his faith in the true God. You're going to have to live by your faith in this hour, and you have to go from faith unto faith. This is unlike any other time. You let the people who have trust in themselves go ahead and be with themselves. You let the ones. This, this Friday night is for people who believe in God for bigger things than what they've already accomplished. If, you be, if you're doing something bigger right now, then this is the Friday nights for you. If God hasn't given you nothing else to do yet, then you should stay where you're at. This is a time like no other time. My God. Let us go to 1 Thessalonians. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians. Let's go to the second chapter of 1 Thessalonians. And the reason we go in there, Thessalonians is a strong chapter. Maybe we'll get in there next week. It's a strong chapter in and of itself because it really deals with the end times. But what I want you to see in 1 Thessalonians, let's go to the 13th verse. First chapter, second chapter. Let's go to the 13th verse. Second chapter, 13th verse. King James. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we received the word of God, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as in truth, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. I, I want you to look at that. Let's, let's stop in that verse right there, verse 13. I'm going to read that and amplify it. And we also thank God continually for this, that when you receive the word of God concerning salvation, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is effectually at work in you, who believe, exercising its inherent supernatural power in those of faith. Whoosh! The word of God is in you, exercising, whoosh, na, 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 exercising its inherent supernatural power in those of faith. The word of God that you have inside of you is moving, but it has to move by faith, my God. And that means it has to be tied to a word. And that the angels are waiting to come out your mouth. They excel in strength. They do his commandment. They hearken to the voice of his word. And the just shall live by faith. You're going to have to live by your faith. How strong is it right now? How is it strong enough to be built up? You can change where you are today. Just build up your faith, my God. Have a word that aligns to what's going on. And everything that's going on. What, what, what is all the wars about right now? Power. What kind of power? Money power. Who? What are they talking about? Billion stock market up. This up. Billion dollar vote here. Billion dollar infrastructure. Billion dollar social structure. Now, don't be on the line. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. No, you want to be on the line giving, 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 giving. That means you've been empowered to prosper because you have to have to give. The blessed is more blessed to give than receive. You want to be on the side giving. 
Oh, Shando Basai. That means that you have to put your hand to the plow and make some. But I'm believing those that are listening right now and those that will be lined up for this move on every Friday night, we're going to be dealing with business scriptures. We're going to be dealing with faith script. We're going to be dealing with wealth script. We're going to deal with property scriptures. We're going to deal with a covenant. Part of your salvation covenant is prosperity. We'll deal with that, with the four folds of the, of the ministry. That's where the four square church came from. Salvation deals with more than just eternal life. It deals with health. It deals with prosperity. It deals with mental health. It deals with it all. My God. He says, whew, that thing is strong there. It says the word, the word of God, you received it. Not mere men. But as it truly is the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its inherent supernatural power in those of faith. You have the power to call things that are not as though they were and they have to become. You can tell a mountain to move because the word of God works where in your heart. Where does the word of heart God go? It goes to your heart, comes out your mouth and affects everything that is touching the earth. Your body touches the earth. When that faith comes out, you can make your body yield to the word of God. Everything comes out of your mouth in faith. Your body must yield to it. Everything. Everything. The word of God shall not return void. And he who speaks it is the same as Christ himself speaking it because you're joint heirs with Christ, one with Christ, and he is your advocate in heaven, watching every word that comes out of your mouth. You better know that you know in this hour who Jesus is, and it is time for the church to rise up and be the church of the living God. Mm, let's go further. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. What? Where are the churches? They're what? In Christ Jesus. Your mind is made up. You've been chosen in him before the foundation of the earth. You ain't on this line if your mind ain't made up. You already got your mind made up. You're in Christ. You're in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have the Jews, <clears throat> who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted <clears throat> us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. So there's some men that are being used by the enemy against us. That's what he says. They not only were aside, they not only was lined up to kill Jesus, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy, but they also persecuted us, he said. And they please not God and are contrary to all men. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. To fill up their sins always. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored and more abundantly to see your face with great desire. All right, wait a minute. That, he, he said, but we really want to see your face. We can't be in your presence. It says, for we would have come unto you, even, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. But Satan hindered us. The Amplified says, for we wanted to come. I, Paul, again and again, two times, wanted to come. But Satan hindered us. Hmm. But Satan hindered us. What you need to understand that a lot of the things we're trying to bring together at this moment, when you know you already spent time research, you spent years developing it, everything has been put in place in an alignment, and all kind of things have been put in place. You've already spent your development money to develop what you're doing, and everything is right there ready to come forth, and the devil is a hinderer. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What you're doing in the wealth realm right now, the enemy, God said you're going to have to go in. You have to go in every night. I need you on that phone. I need you in prayer. And you're going to have to pray. I had a dream recently. And somebody gave me a little ticket. And it said, this is it. And handed me a ticket. And all it said on the little ticket was pray. In a dream. It said pray. That's all it was on the ticket. Nothing else. Pray. This is the time to go in. So we're going to be on that line on Friday nights. 
We're going to get some scripture, some real word, confess our faith, and we're going to put our hands to the plow and go to work. If you ain't working and ain't doing nothing, Friday night's not the night for you. Like I said, you know, turn on TBN, Daystar, or something else, get you some word, go on YouTube, whatever. But for those that you know that it is time to transfer that business in your hand, that dream, that vision that you wrote down and made plain, make it plain. Make it plain. If you want to be a thousandaire, put down there, I want to be a thousandaire. If you want to make 50000 a year, 50000 But if you plan to be more than enough, where there's not room enough for me to receive it, blessed to be a blessing, then put you some numbers down that is beyond your belief. Because he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we think or ask, according to the power that works inside of us. What power? The word himself. Woo! Shando Bosaya. You need to know in this hour, unlike any other time. Then he says in the 19th verse, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Christ Jesus at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. He said, I know I'm giving you something. I'm not worried about it. You're going to be the one that worked the power of Christ in the earth. Paul knew it. And he was giving us information. But this is what you need to know. In this here epistles of the New Testament, Paul wrote about 14 books. They know 13 for sure. They're not sure who wrote Hebrews, but they don't believe anybody had the intellect of the Hebrew law and of the Christianity but Paul. But it doesn't give us an absolute understanding of who the author is. But they believe it's Paul. There's enough information about Timothy and various different things that you would have to be a scholar on the word. And Paul was a scholar. He was a Pharisee of the tribe of Benjamin. So they believe he wrote the book of Hebrews. But he wrote all these books, and he began to tell us in each and every one of them, if you in this flesh, you're going to have difficulties. And he said, I came, tried to make it three times. So if you've been knocking on the doors for your business, you've been knocking on doors for licenses, you've been knocking on doors for therapy, anything, God said, he's on our side right now. We have help. He told us to come on in. So if you be on there Friday nights, we're going in every Friday night. Christmas Eve is Friday night. New Year's Eve is on a Friday night. I'll be on there at 6.30. It don't matter because when I get instruction from God, I'm getting ready to follow it to the letter. I'm going to follow it to the letter. Sister Andrea sent me something the other day. I seen it on the phone. She's probably even on there right now. But she sent a message on the phone. And it, it was a powerful message. And it, it really... Let me see if I can find it. It said... Where is that message at? Here it is. To achieve your calling, you have to... You have to have rigorous discipline. To achieve your calling, you have to have rigorous. Woo, rigorous. That means it's got to be showing up on point every day, all the time. Rigorous discipline. That means that it should be easy. One thing I can tell you in this hour, you're going to have to be disciplined. Football teams that win championships have discipline. People who win gold medals have discipline. People who become wealthy have discipline. We're going to have to really strengthen our discipline about the kingdom of God and the word of God. You have to, I, I have to, maybe you don't, but I do. You're going to have to really identify with what's taking your time and what's taking your mind and what's taking your vision. you got to be able to keep your eye on it and keep it plain because there's some stuff that don't pertain to us. You need to know some stuff, but these people are putting so much information out there that is cluttering the place where you need to have the laser beam for what God has released to you. And you got to be able to hear his voice clearly now. And you want to be able to have favor with men. So you want to be able to tap into where this wealth is moving at. Because each and every one of you have gifting. Some of you have been prepared for such a time as this. Esther, she's known to be great. And you know what Mordecai told her? Said, could it be you were put here for such a time as this? You need to know. Some of you have been in, just been chilling out, wondering what to do. You're in the best position of your life. You have everything you need to move into another level of wealth. That wealth is a part of your covenant. In the book of Deuteronomy, God said, It is I that give you power to get wealth to establish my covenant with you. 
He has a covenant that he needs to fulfill. What part of his covenant does he need to fulfill? I'm going to shake the earth. The gold is mine, the silver is mine. And I'm going to transfer the wealth of the sinner into the hands of the just. He's got something he needs to fulfill in our lives. Let's show up and get it done. Let's show up and get it done. This is it. This is now. Now faith. Praise God. Amen. I don't have any more notes over here. Amen. I don't have any more notes. We're going to call it a day. Amen. Praise God. What time is it? It's 737. 737. <laughs> 737. Moving to heaven. 737. We're going to heaven. Heaven on earth now. I ain't in no rush. <laughs> I'm, I, I still got a lot of living to do here. I want people to look on me and know that his God is real. You want them to look on you and know your God is real. They're supposed to look on us, the book of Isaiah said, and they shall look on us and know we're the seed of the blessed. My God. Most of you have already been talking to different people. You got business names. You feel it. You know it. You've been knocking. It's always something. That's the devil at work. We're going to just pray right now for a while. And, and just let the devil know what we mean. Amen. Now time for offering, if you could repeat after me. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, there's provision in my house. I'm a cheerful giver, a seed sower, and a harvest reaper. My harvest includes houses, lands, checks in the mail, open doors and promotions, business opportunities, money in my hands, debts canceled, inheritances, and more. My seed is physical and financial, so I expect a physical and a financial harvest. According to the word of God, as long as there remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. So I give in faith, expecting my harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. You can also give your tithe and offering to Zell, and the handle is 562-659-4127. The handle for Cash App is Greater Works LA. And you can also send your tithing to PO Box 11744. Carson, California, 90749. Let's rest the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who gave, Lord, and those who couldn't. And we also thank you in advance, Lord, because we know you're going to provide. We thank you for using us in your kingdom, Lord, and we ask that you continue to use us so we can help those in agony and pain. We bless this offering now in Jesus' name. Amen.